Okay, we left off um, speaking um, about the Black Panther Party. Um, now we're into our nation's um, founder, which is um, Dr. Malachi Z. Z. York. Um, he is the founder of the United Nuwabi Nation of Moors. He is a master teacher, having taught undisputable facts for over 30 years. He is the author of over 500 scrolls and represents all topics under and above the sun. And no one has come forth until after he was kidnapped to refute any of his teachings. Um, his mission here was to break the spell of ignorance and elevate us to our supreme state of being. President Saru, I have a two-part question. Can you expound more on the teachings of Dr. York and how the teachings today are influencing many, many other organizations as it relates to, to, to aiding and unifying the, the Moorish people? Well, uh, Dr. York had an ideology, I would say, um, that he had to come giving us what we wanted in order for us to learn to want what he had to give. Mm -hmm. Uh, according to him, when he first came in the 60s, in the late 60s, um, he came with um, Nuwabu. Um, and he said that the people wasn't ready, and so he had to rethink his approach. And thus, the path that everybody knows today, you know, started off with Islam, mm -hmm. and we gravitated from Islam and went into the Nubian Islamic Hebrews, mm -hmm. from the Nubian Islamic Hebrews, went into the right knowledge era. And of course, when we got to the right now, it's Aaron Nawabu was back in the forefront, you know, as it was at the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Wabu uh, is our culture. You know, it's a culture that deals with uh, facts that are confirmed, you know, real science, math, you know, and uh, that is coined as Nuwabu. That's the term we use to describe uh, what we call right knowledge, you know, correct information. You know something that's sound you know as in firm unshakable mm -hmm. and so a lot of people didn't like him the man but his teachings and him were two different uh, segments you know meaning uh, whether they liked him or not the teachings were undeniable it was undisputed uh, and even though they meaning some those who wanted to combat him but there were people that came out to try to dispute the facts mm -hmm. but you know how do you dispute two plus two equaling four in, 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 in addition? You really can't dispute that. You know, it's, it speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And so people had to make up stuff, you know, his name, who they say he was, the year he was born. I mean, it was a whole, it was a whole campaign, you know, but it didn't stop him and what he had to do because he was uh, the last, uh, uh, he brought up the rear, and completing everybody's teachings, meaning actually making them applicable, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through the having our own nationality concept of Noble Drew Ali, which we have our own nationality, you know, but not the nationality as the way they taught it. They taught about nationality, but they're still U.S. citizens in the more science mm -hmm. So, you know, you're saying nationality, but you're still part of the same government that's destroying you. So you already have a nationality, you know, which is the United States uh, of America citizen. You know, that is your na nationality, USA. You know, you get a passport and say nationality, USA, in the United States of America. Now, they want to say more is American, and I'm not here to dispute that. You know, you can, you can name your people that's a part of your company, you know, or your religious institution, whatever you want. You have that right. That's why you have a 501c3. You can call it what you want. Uh, but as far as when you start talking about nationhood, uh, then it becomes different. So he was able to bring about a true nationality, mm -hmm. you know, and a nation can be called whatever it wants. Whatever the people want to call themselves, they can call themselves. Right. You know, so there's no certain name you have to use in order to be recognized as a nation. You get what I'm saying? Except for whatever the people want to use or the people who are in government or in the area for that government to come up with a name. Whatever they pick, that's the name. And thus, that becomes your nationality for those who accept it. Uh, and so, again, he was able to actually take the nationality piece and make it a reality. The independent piece that Margaret Garvey was talking about, he was able to take that independent.
independence and show what we could do if we work together, mm -hmm. you know, for ourselves. So we had 476 acres of land in Eaton, Georgia, 19 acres cultivated uh, to become known as the famous Tamaray, Egypt of the West, mm -hmm. that was built by all Moorish hands, mm -hmm. you know, or, or some were called black hands, you know, and became the great pyramids that was erected here in the West. Uh, through that, in the, through that, uh, teachings of Margaret Garvey being independent, he was able to take that and make it a reality. Mm -hmm. He was also able to take the reality of uh, cleaning up the community, like Honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad was able to do, he was also able to do. You know, we had uh, Ansars and people patrolling the streets of or certain neighborhoods of uh, New York, mm -hmm. you know, in Brooklyn, the Brushwick area, uh, where uh, they were keeping, you know, certain areas safe where our people were at, people that were part of the community, et cetera. Uh, you know, uh, owning apartment buildings, etc. You know, think, you know, it's pride and ownership. Mm -hmm. And so, the same way Honorable Elijah Muhammad was able to do that, you know, he was able to demonstrate that for us. And so, we had a lot of things that we acquired on our walk to get to where we are now as a young nation. Uh, he was able to take uh, the intellect that, you know, let's say, uh, noble. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Malcolm X and Martin was able to bring to the forefront. He was able to take that and produce, you know, undeniable amounts of books on breaking the spell of ignorance mm -hmm. in every arena. Mm -hmm. He left no stone unturned. He may not have elaborated, uh, you know, to a certain degree in certain areas, but enough to where he dealt with it and uh, brought enough of it out where, you know, you it got our people thinking for themselves. So he was just able to take the best of it, what everybody had to offer, without stepping on their backs. Mm, right. You know, that was important. Right. Nowadays, if you talk about noble Jewish, if I'm a Moore Science Temple uh, 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 member, and I'm a member of, of that company, then if I say uh, noble Jewali is great, or he's the greatest, or he's the prophet, he's the only one, you know, he's the only one that did this, the only one that did that, then this is where the ego gets in, where, you know, our people are getting into a space where they only want to uh, use one of the many that came to help, instead of taking the best of what everybody had to offer mm -hmm. and, and and collectively bringing that together, they want to say, no, the only one was Noble Drali, or the only one is Dr. Ben, or the only one is uh, Sheikh and the Diop. Mm -hmm. Well, the only one is, uh, 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 was it uh, uh, Dr. Clark? Did I say mm -hmm. Dr. Clark? Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Clark. Or well, the only one is Dr. York. Or mm -hmm. well, the only one is, uh, you know, Preflo Dollar, mm -hmm. etc. You know, they want to just say one person. But when you deal with the European, as he's called, he got a whole line of oh, everybody yeah. who was them, whether they agree with everything or not, that contributed to their society. That's true. And they're able to rule that way. And our people just want one. one. Out of everybody that came, we just want one. One Satan. That, that's the spell. That's the religion mentality. So uh, we, don't, we don't do that here in the United Wabba Nation Moors. Mm -hmm. You know, we teach about Noble Jew Ali. We don't agree with everything that he brought. That don't mean he was a bad person because we don't agree. But we agree on what we agree on, which is we need to be independent and we need nationality. Mm -hmm. So that we can take, you know, and, and without stepping on his back. Right. We appreciate what you did. We're going to use this. Mm -hmm. And then we can do that with every one of our leaders that came forward. So we don't believe in stepping on because we don't believe, first of all. But we don't, we don't accept uh, that you have to step on your brother or your sister in order to elevate what you're doing over here. You know, in fact, if you do it right, you can actually compliment everybody. That's right. It's just showing there was a part of a collective pool to help us all. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. a lot of times you get these movements that spring up and they, you know, it's the ego. You know, you know, only the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the one that came to do this for the black man in America. Only. Mm -hmm. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad couldn't do what he had did if he didn't see the leadership from those before him. That's right. It's not like he just popped up out of the dunya, as they call it, out of the world. There was nothing around him. He just created something. It, it, according to their teaching, 
Somebody came to him. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Taught him for three years mm -hmm. before he came back and taught everybody else. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is you have to be willing to take the take the best of what our people had to offer. And if it works, let's use it. If it don't work, then let's just discard it. Mm -hmm. And that's discarded in a way where we're not disrespectful. You know, I get people ask me stuff about Farrakhan and uh, other people who are elders in our community doing things. I mean, how can you talk bad on somebody like Farrakhan? I mean, from a human being approach, not from a ideology approach. Because if you if you get stuck in ideology, then you can start to try to make him different from you. But I mean, from an approach where, as a humanitarian, mm -hmm. Farrakhan is all about uh, black people having the ability to rule themselves and think for themselves and do what they need to do for themselves, and that you know uh, the white race is the devil. That's part of their teaching, you know. Right. But even in as we was taught by Dr. York, even in his, the white man is the devil mentality, if Farrakhan was somewhere and a white woman fell, the good, the God in him would help that white woman up off the ground. He would not step over her or act like he didn't see it. I don't see him. I don't see him as that kind of elder. I see him as the kind of elder is, I know what he means when he say the white man is the devil. Because mm -hmm. he's called the devil's man. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is true. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just so happens he's saying it from uh, the balcony of a religious institution, so it might have a little more uh, zing on it, but the bottom line is he's talking about a group of people who's hurting his people. And so he was taught and seen a solution to that problem, and so he's going about that avenue to make it happen. But I don't have to talk bad on it on on a, somebody who's been out in the community helping people for you know many 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 years before I was even born. You know a lot of these cats they they weren't even born with these people out here fighting and they got nerve to talk bad on one of our elders. You get what I'm saying because mm -hmm. they don't have true knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know you don't talk bad on somebody who's been fighting to help liberate you. Hell, if it wasn't for the Nation of Islam doing what they did. You might not even have a platform to do what you're doing now. You know, or Martin Luther King, or Noble Drew Ali, or Marcus Garvey, or Dr. Ben, or, uh, you know, all the greats that came before. Mm -hmm. All these people helped build a stage that we can stand on to do what we need to do. And the, and the, the mentality of the people who think that they got to hurt or beat down their brother to elevate themselves, that's the ego. Mm -hmm. And the ego is another problem in itself that we need to eliminate. You know, we can talk about what they brought and we can talk about it in a respectful, tasteful manner so that we can move forward together. If we try to move forward together, because sometimes you got people in front of you, they ain't trying to move forward with you. They want to cause dissension and problems. You know, but if you're going to be a true humanitarian and diplomat, then you should be able to deal with anybody from any walk of life. Come in contact with them. Just not agree with everything that they have to bring. Still not hate them. Still not be disrespectful when they will go about your business. Because you don't have to be a part of something if you don't want to be a part of it. You know, how many times you meet people in the street that you don't know. But you might have a great conversation with them. And then you meet some people in the streets you don't know and you wish you never met them. But you didn't have to be nasty with them. You just, you know, go about your business. You know, now if they're trying to stop you from going about your business, then now you can tap into something else. Right. You know, but I'm talking about just from just being decent human being standpoint. You know, uh, just being able to have a conversation and, and and even if you don't agree, you can still be able to move forward. Right. I mean, I've met, you know, at our place of business, I've been able to meet people that's more Muslim than the average Muslim. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I'm able to agree on things I can agree with this individual on and disagree on things that I don't agree on and we still able to communicate. You know, why, you know, that's interesting. I don't really see it that way, but, you know, it's not really worth the argument. Right. Because why do you have to, what's the point of arguing? The only, part of, the only point in arguing is if you want to be right. That's what arguments are for. You want to be right. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about what's right. You want to be right. When you're having a conversation... The people are talking about what's right. What's right is you just can't kill civilians. 
You know, but when you want to be right, well, he shouldn't have reached for it. He shouldn't have did this. He shouldn't have did that. Well, how about what you shouldn't have did? How about you shouldn't have been afraid of your life? Afraid for your life? Aren't you trained? Mm -hmm. Don't you go to the gun range? Mm -hmm. Don't you go through scenarios when this could happen and that could happen? I mean, I served in the military during 9 11. We had rules of engagement that we was taught. Mm -hmm. You know, you just didn't go into town and just kill everybody in the, in the community. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. Don't fire unless fired upon. And maybe, okay, the police, maybe the police ain't taught that. I don't really know what they teaching them, honestly. And it can't be good, whatever it is, because they yeah. killing everybody. everybody. But uh, I don't know how they're taught and what they're taught, but I know when I served in the military, we was taught you don't fire unless fired upon. You know, even if they have weapons. Because you can have weapons. Uh, imagine how they encountered the Black Panthers in the 60s. They was armed. But imagine they went out there and just start killing everybody. So if you can meet them, if you can meet black people in the street and not kill them dead then, then what's the mm -hmm. problem today? You know, what's the problem today? Yeah. But you don't want to not kill them. You're looking for a reason. You trigger happy. Because yeah. you're a part of a plan to exterminate. Yeah. Obviously, it got to be that because that's the only thing we can see. When you're killing people for no reason, I mean, I, I just saw a video of a man who was shot by... Shot, I don't know if he was shot, but he was shot at. I definitely know, like fifteen shot, fifteen, sixty shot in his own driveway. Yeah, right, right. It was a brother. Just happened. Here, here we go, another brother mm -hmm. on his property, in his driveway, in his vehicle. Oh. Somebody called, said somebody was breaking into a car, and instead of the police coming up and asking questions, they come up with guns blazing. Yeah, you know, fifteen, sixteen shots at the car. And you got megaphones and everything. You ain't got to get the car. You get what I'm saying? But they trigger happy. I think This is a serious problem, and this is the reason why Black Lives was formed. Black Lives Matter was formed. This is the reason why the Black Panther Party was formed. This is the reason why the Bloods was formed. This is the reason why the Crips was formed. This is the reason why the Black Nationalists was formed. This is the reason why the Nation of Islam was formed. This is the reason why uh, the Moore Science Temple was formed. All of our organization was formed because of what they were doing to us. Not one of them popped up because of something that was they were, they were not doing. That's true. Even Dr. Ben popped up because what they were teaching was incorrect. Yeah. When Dr. Uh, I shouldn't even say Dr. Ben, Professor Ben. Mm -hmm. Or when uh, Professor uh, Ivan Van Sertiman, uh came forward. You know, uh, he came forward as a direct result of them lying in history mm -hmm. about who and what we are and what we did and what we didn't do. Every one of our people popped up because of something they was doing. Rosa Park popped up. Why? Because people need to get out. And so she was a medium to help them get out. Mm -hmm. But not everybody wanted to be out. That's why she said, I could have freed thousands more if they would have just knew they were slaves. Mm -hmm. Now, now how, how, how are you going to be in slavery, a known slavery, mm -hmm. and not know you were slaves? We talking about the height of cotton picking, as they would call it. Right. And Harriet Tubman definitely, definitely said she would have freed more. If they would have just knew that they were slaves. And here slaves. we are. Again. <laughs> you know, we the Harriet Tubman's now. Right, right. Y'all can be free, free. Mm -hmm. if only y'all would have known that y'all in captivity. The problem is the United States government is the plantation. Well, That's the plantation. Been. The United States government. You don't want to be in a plantation to step out. That's why we're here. And we're the only ones that are here. The only nation that's here in this country right now that's a Moorish nation. I don't mean nation like Cherokee nation. Mm -hmm. That's full of people who look like the people who they had the signs that said, Keep, beware the white man. Mm -hmm. And now you got white men popping up talking about he Cherokee. And white men popping up, they, they all the Indians now. <laughs> you, you don't even see the, the true natives no more. They didn't they did took over. You know, they grew their hair long and they started putting on costumes and painting their face. And now they, you know, I mean, that's cool for people who don't know. But for those of us who know, yeah. know that they are not the real people. Exactly. You know, so we are the Harriet Tubman's of the day mm -hmm. telling you, come out. And we didn't free some. Right. You know, and we can free many more, more if only they knew that they were a part of a system that was oppressing them. Okay. All right. So now... 
we are at the height of our nation. And as a people, uh, we have passed through the furnace and we have not been consumed. It has been more than two centuries and a half. And we have survived contact with the Indo-European race. They're rough though. <laughs> yes. With that being said, um, our nation, the, the New Orleans nation of Moors, we are standing at the portals of a new world, a new life and a new destiny. Can you give us now, President Osaru, a solution of how can those outside the New Wabian Nation can link up and join with us under one common cause and build a foundation for peace and justice for blacks in America, so-called blacks in America. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the first thing to do is uh, go to our website, unnm.org, uh, check out our website, you know, if it's a good fit for you, fill out the naturalization application, the 19-1 uh, application for naturalization, and we can start the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's how it starts. I mean, the same way if you in another country, you want to be, become a U.S. citizen. You got to go through their naturalization process. You want to be a part of any country that that doesn't just let you walk in. I, I don't know of any nations like that where you can just walk in. Mm -hmm. Every nation got some kind of security where you know you gotta they gotta find out who you are, where you came from, mm -hmm. you know, etc. You know, and that's usually the naturalization process. Uh, you know, and that's how it starts. We saying bring the best that you have to offer, bring it home mm -hmm. to a real nation, not just somebody who's speaking on the word nation. But, you know, actually have everything in place to actually be a nation. We have a Declaration of Independence signed. We have a constitution for our government. We have a national flag. We have our own language. We have our own culture. You know, so we don't need them. You know, so uh, to become a Nawabi and more don't mean you have to drop the teachings of Noble Juali. To become a Nawabi more don't mean you have to drop the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or any leader that came and brought something that you like. You don't have to drop that. Mm -hmm. Do you have to drop it for America? Mm -hmm. Are the Moors in America? Mm -hmm. As the Moor Science Temple, as they're called, doing what they do, but still U.S. citizens. Nation of Islam is there, doing what they do as U.S. citizens. And everybody else that's in there, doing what they do as U.S. citizens, you can do the same thing here. But if you come here, we can work together. Because I don't see you as an enemy. Mm -hmm. You have a right to your expression. Because teaching about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad ain't going to hurt our children. It's just not. Right. You know, we may not agree with everything that you're talking about as far as from a religious con uh, context, if I'm not from that type of religion, mm -hmm. if I have limited knowledge, but those who have been educated under the teachings of Dr. York know that we are all the same. You know, and he, you know, the Tamahu race, mm -hmm. you know, European race, Indo-European, they got in there and they caused the decision in that. You know, everybody's been divided up. How many sects of Islam are, is it out there? Mm -hmm. You know, it's one Allah, but many different sects. How many Christian sects are, are out there or denominations are they out there? One Christ, but all these denominations. You get what I'm saying? You can do that across the board everywhere. Everywhere where he's been has been some kind of division. So that ain't the problem. Our problem ain't our religion because we got plenty of those. Mm -hmm. Our problem is being able to be independent on our own without them in our way. Right. That's been the problem. Right. They always been in the way to stop progression. So even as brilliant as all of our leaders have been, in the past, and some who are still living and doing things right now, uh, they can never be truly successful because they're still working in the system that's not for them. Right. They're still they're still in the plantation. The plantation is the United States government. So you out there working in the field, but it ain't benefiting you because all your hard work still still gives you. You can talk about the white man being dumb all the, all day, but if you still got to pay him taxes, what does he care? You go to work and he can he can garnish your wages. He don't care what you say about him. That's the real power. The power is the government. 
And if you don't see that that's stopping us from moving forward, mm -hmm. then this ain't for you. Because you, you always had that slave that always said, hey, what's better than what we have here? You know, we got master. He, he, he feed us good. He mm -hmm. take care of us. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to start no trouble. You know, you always got that type of Negro. Right. You get right, what I'm saying? Right, then you right, have the ones right. that's like Nat Turner. Look, how many of y'all want to be free? And, and the thousand people put their hand up. How many of y'all wanted to fight for y'all freedom? 900 put their hands up. Y'all step forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, the first thing you have to do to be free, I want you to turn around and look at that hundred that didn't raise their hand. You got to get rid of them first. Because you're going to always have those that look like you going to be the ones to turn you in, give up your plans, tell your strategies, mm -hmm. you know, set you up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like, 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 uh, what's his name? Cyphers in the Matrix. The guy who, right. who knew better yeah. but wanted to go back to sleep. So he wanted to give up the keys to Zion because he wanted to eat a steak and be important. Be important. In, a, in, a, in a world that he knows is illusional. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He knew that everything out there that he saw was not really there. But he said, you know what? I'm tired of eating goop every day. Yeah. I'm tired of all this fighting and, you know, he became complacent. This is what you call conformity. Mm hmm as we was taught here in 2016, you don't even want to be a racist anymore. You have yet again learned to conform. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean racist like hate. I right. mean, you don't want to separate. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with separating. That don't mean you can't do business with them and work with them and, you know, exchange, right. you know, uh, that way. But you don't have to live amongst them. You don't have to interbreed with them. Do the lion breed with the cheetah? Does the hawk breed with the sparrow? Does the black ant breed with the red ant? No. So all this intermingling is causing the problem. We can respect each other. This is the reason why the, in, in white society they have Ku Klux Klan and Aryan Nation and all these uh, brother so-called brotherhoods they have is to protect their race. They don't. They don't. They understand that you can't just be breeding with these Negroes. So they out there trying to educate their own people. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, hey, look! don't breed with them. Don't. Don't do it. And they're right in that. They might not be right in everything else, but they're right. Look, don't breed. Because they understand that they breed, that they get bred out. There is no white race if you if you keep breeding mm -hmm. with, with more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be all over. Yeah, you know, definitely. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? The gene is too, mm -hmm. too dominant. The, right? the, the blood is too strong. You know, the melanin is too progressive. And they understand that those who've been educated in that in that field, mm -hmm. you know, so that's the reason why they are there, because they don't want to be wiped out genetically. Mm -hmm. You get them, so they want to hold on to what they're calling white power, because white power is is illusion that causes confusion. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not any it's not of real substance if it keeps going down the path of this integration thing. And so it causes problems. It's causing people like them to pop up. But if all white people was able to just be around all white people, would there be an Aryan nation? Would there be a brotherhood? Would there be a Ku Klux Klan? Because mm -hmm. all these organizations that they're calling uh, hate organizations, according to the United States government, they're there because we're there. The Ku Klux Klan popped up after slaves were let go. Mm -hmm. That's right. You get what I'm saying? That's so. Right. The problem is us being there. These so-called organizations don't need to be around if we ain't around. And I don't mean let them have everything they took. I, I, I mean, we can still have what we need to have to survive. Mm -hmm. You know, boundaries have to be, you know, made. You know, that don't mean we can't still be civil. But you just can't control every aspect of me and my family's life. That was cool when I was in your government. And when I say cool, that's, you know, sarcastically being said. Because it wasn't cool then. It wasn't educating us properly. Everything you told us was a lie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So True that. Uh, these are things that we have to come to terms with and got to be willing to do something about. You know, so that they can, you know, go about their business and we can go about ours. Okay. Now, I, I visit the website quite often. And I noticed something today when I went to, to the website. 
uh, that over 300 people have subscribed to our nation's website to be updated on the moves we are making as a nation. I think that's wonderful. I think that um, is that the and, and it's mostly the young people that um, are, are are looking for a way out because they are no longer listening to the old saying we ain't what we used to be but thank god we're not where we used to be you know the old saying um be happy where you are is what the old saying is don't don't um, try to do this don't try to do that but i'm happy to see that a lot of the the, the young people are um are, are visiting our website and you know they're calling constantly you know getting um, many many phone calls um per day um for updates and and what we're doing in the nation do you have anything you want to say to the young people before um this interview is over yeah i would say you know just uh educate yourself you know investigate you know see if it's see if what we have to offer is a good fit for you mm -hmm. and if it is you know follow the steps to become a part and help build right you know we need the women to step forward, we need women leaders, women teachers, women educators, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we don't see them enough. It's always the men, the men, the men. Right. Where are, our, where are our powerful sisters? Right. I know they out there, you know, but they're being silenced by the men, you know, who go from the old biblical context, you know, he's the head. Yeah. You know, uh, and so there's a lot of things that's keeping the women suppressed, but they need to come home too. We need our sisters uh, more now than ever. Never. That's true. And uh, That's those three hundred people were just for today. Yes, that, that was just for today. Yeah, that was July uh, 30th, 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 July thirtieth, two thousand sixteen. Three hundred yeah. people subscribed today. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people subscribed yesterday, but three hundred subscribed today. I think we almost at uh, two thousand. I mean, uh, twenty thousand people right. that actually visited our website. But everybody's saying the same thing which is nationality. Right. And a lot of them are asking the same thing. You know, I was listening to what, you know, the board, the, the brothers are talking about the more science too, but y'all seem to have, you know, this in place, that in place, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we all accept, look, those are our brothers. So, you right. know, we don't, we ain't in opposition with them. You know, they just have a different approach than what we have. But what we have in common is the fact that we agree that we need to have our own nationality and we need to be yeah, independent. Mm -hmm. Right. To nation build. To right. move forward. So, uh, you know, I'd like to thank everybody who was able to uh, participate in watching this, uh, this, this audio here. Mm -hmm. uh, and anybody who would like to reach out to us, you can reach us at uh, unnm.org or 855-486-8666. All right. Thank you, President Osaru. Um, we'll um, come back again and try to give the people what they want. Um, why do? Why do?